having a new client or switching the software and need to enter all these prior year carryovers? I know how frustrating it could be sometimes. So let me show you where to enter them and explain you the concept behind the top five common carryovers from last year. So I'll start with showing the prior year tax return and show you where carryovers are coming from. Then I'll show you how to, where to enter them in the tax software and where they should show up on the current year tax form. Let's dive in. So let's start with the most common and the most important one, which is net operating losses. Uh, so first of all, like this is how prior year tax return looks like. And that's kind of how we know it, there were some prior net operating losses last year. So they would show up under schedule one, line A, we can see there is a loss right here. And also when we scroll down, we would see like all this like NLOs and net operating losses stuff, and it will be net, net operating loss carryover to 2023, right? Uh, that's good case scenario but they actually show us what carryovers are to the next year uh, so usually net operating losses are generated like let's say the client had um they had like a schedule c loss last year which they couldn't deduct so it's a business losses from prior years they were not able to use it in prior years so they carried over uh, carry forward indefinitely and start in 2021 they cannot carry back and they also limited to 80% of income deduct deductibility, right? Uh, so, uh, so let's. So basically, when I look at this return, I see the total loss on prior year tax return was 6,081, right? So it consisted of a couple um, net operating losses from a couple of years. So for example, here it says 2015 annual utilization. So this one was from 2015. So I would just put it here. Then this part was from 2016, 2016, and then there is part of it was from 20, uh, 2020, 2020 annual utilization, right? And all this stuff is it's carried forward to tax year 2023. And it ties to our amount right here, right? So this is our total loss. This is what will be carried forward to the next year. Uh, let me show you now how to enter it in the tax software, in the current year tax software. So this was the prior year tax return, and now we're switching to current year um, tax preparation, which is 2023. So we'll start with net operating loss and how to enter it in a Drake tax software. Uh, so I open the individual tax return and I need to enter NOL that I just showed you. The reason why we need to enter because we had some losses from last year, most likely from Schedule C. Uh, so I would just, um, I would search for something. So that would be my first step. So I would like search for loss or I would search for um, net operating loss or something like that. So actually lost loss worked because it took me right away where I need to be. So here, this is where I enter information for net operating loss from prior years. Uh, but I would be like, okay, so what if I don't enter loss? Like, where would I go? So here's like under general information, we have income, we have adjustments, credits. So I would assume it could have been under income section or maybe other forms. That's kind of like, seems like more appropriate or miscellaneous maybe. So under other forms, I actually do, I do find this NOL carryovers worksheet. So I'm pretty sure if you sh search for NOL carryovers, it will take us here as well. So let's enter our carryovers, as I just discussed. So we start with uh, 2015, right? Uh, so that would be, uh, and let me see where my Excel schedule, 2016. And we also have 2020. Great, uh, so we have this, a couple sections here so we have to choose if it belongs to a taxpayer or a spouse um, so technically like if it comes from a schedule c from taxpayer we would choose taxpayer or a spouse whichever uh, schedule c or business it came from right 
as it has another section it called used prior so we st if we had carryover let's say in 2013 we have a thousand dollars carryover but we used it before we still need to include it for consistency purpose right uh, so we can show that it was nol but we used it before so if we use any of this nol this year it actually next year it will show up as we used part of it and they probably will start with using the um, older ones or something like that also there is another section here it says alternative minimum tax so that part is uh, could be a little bit different because we know AMT is like additional tax. It calculates a little bit different. So NOL can be calculated in different way as well. So if we look at prior year tax return and we see that NOL, NOL looks different, we have to enter that loss as well. So now let me show you how it's showing up on our forms. Uh, so we go to view print and I go under schedule one. So the total NOL we had is 6,081. So here on schedule one, we can see the total uh, NOL deducted this year is 6,081, right? And it says go to schedule one, uh, statement one, I'm sorry. So we can see this NOL explanation. And also we have a worksheet about NOL, for example, like this one. And it's pretty much shows what we entered 2015, 2016, uh, 2020, and we have the amount used this year. So we have no carryovers remainder, right? So it will be no carryovers to the next year. Awesome. Let's go to the next carryover. Capital gain losses are only deducted up to 3k a year, and then they can be carry, carry forward indefinitely as well as an NOL. Uh, so basically, we look at Schedule D. So this is prior year tax return 2022, and we have short-term uh, losses of this amount, right? And then we have uh, long-term losses of 5,082, and so the total is 8,041 but only 3,000 is deductible, right? Uh, so now we have a questions like, from those 3,000, are we taking short-term or long-term or a mix? Like, what is the order? So basically the order is we always take, uh, we deduct short-term gains first, and then whatever's carry forward will be or from short-term gains or from long-term gains. What it actually means. So here's short-term, here's long-term. So what is used first? So first we use short-term. So we'll use this amount and also we'll use the rest from long-term gains, long-term gains, right? Uh, so basically the carryover would be the difference between whatever we had used here and what we used in 2022. So it will be smaller and the nature uh, of uh, carry forward gains that so will be able to carry forward to 2023 and deduct on 2023 your tax return will be long-term capital losses and uh, yeah so that's that's a thing this is what irs does and basically it's just because those rates are um, taxable from yeah, as an ordinary income right rates and those are under capital gain losses so they don't want you to do tax planning based on like short term carrying forward one or another. But anyways, so this is what gets deducted short term and whatever left over from long term gains is getting carry forward. So now what we need to enter in 2023 tax return is um, long term capital losses carry forward of the 5041. So let me show you how to enter it in a tax software now. The next one and extremely common one will be capital gain losses, right? Uh, and I'll show you how to enter them in Drake tax. So I'll just explain you about short term, long term in the orders are taken. So now we only have this amount that needs to be entered to 2020 um, to carry overs uh, and it will be long term gains, right? I'm sorry, long term losses. Uh, so also like we can search for something with like this is like very I think intuitive for me So I know it's gonna go on schedule D So what I would recommend I would go on income and here we have this schedule D options uh, So I would open schedule D loss and I mean it pretty much says loss carryover. So that's what we need, right? 
Uh, and here we go. Short term, long term, and we have capital loss carryovers from 2022 for short term, a regular loss, and then AMT if it's different, right? So in our case, we have only a long term capital loss. And uh, we enter everything in, like positive numbers because it's already says capital loss, right? So we enter this and let me show you where it goes on the tax return. So we go view and print and then schedule D. And right here we have our long term a capital loss carryover, right? Uh, so that's how we know and seems like in our case we have it's going to carry over to next year as well so we have this 6145 uh, 6, as a net capital losses and 3000 of it will be lo um, used up right so they will use 132 uh, in a first order for short term and then whatever left over from long term so whatever minus 3000 and minus um, this 132 will be capital loss carry over to the next year and let's see if it actually shows up here somewhere. So we have worksheet carry over. Oh yeah, right here. You see we have already a long-term capital losses carry over to 2024 tax return. Awesome. Let's switch to next one now. A foreign tax credit can be carried back uh, one year and can 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 be for, carry forward 10 years so if you have um something like um like let's say right here on a schedule it shows what years the carry overs are from so after 10 years it's gonna expire so this thing can expire for next year right uh so when we enter so let me show you where it show up, shows up. So this is our foreign tax credit form, form 1116. And here we can see this was foreign taxes in the current year, which was 2022. And right here it shows, here's our total um, uh, foreign taxes this year. And this is our carryover from last year, which is also listed in here, right? So this is summary for all the years. Um, but because there is no enough um, foreign income on this current year, uh, only part of it was able, they were able to deduct. So they only deducted 374. So what happens now? So now the difference between, um, sorry, um, 859, which is current year taxes right here, and whatever was able to be were able to deduct 374 will be, um, the difference will be carried forward to the next year as a, a taxes from 2022. So this amount, uh, to make it a little bit more simple and so we don't have to enter each year in a tax software, I uh, let's pretend this was from, uh, no, okay, we'll enter just a couple numbers. So I'll enter 2012, sorry, 2012, and I pretend the rest is... Um, and the rest was from 2021, right? So now, <clears throat> sorry, my bad. So I'm trying to see what would be. Oops. Okay, that happens. <laughs> 2772 minus 737. Okay, so this is uh, for example, so make it simple to do it in a tax software. This amount will be from 2020. 12 right right here and everything else we pretend is a total from 20 uh 21 so the total still stays the same 2772 so this thing will expire in 2023 because it's it's it can only be carry forward 10 years right so this will be only carry overs to 2021 i'm sorry to 2023 will only carry over the foreign tax credit uh, from year 2022 and everything before, I mean, after 2012, but not 2012 because that will expire. So now I'm just going to delete this and this should be our uh, total credit that we need to enter in the tax software. Um, sorry, I should probably learn how to use Excel before I record videos, but I think I knew how to do it. But anyways, let me show you the tax software. I am actually much better in the tax softwares. <laughs> Let's switch to uh, the tax software now. 
foreign tax credit carryovers in Drake tax software. Uh, so for this one, the same idea. I mean, I kind of would like to go to, um, I don't know, it makes me want to go to foreign probably to see if there is any carryovers here. But also at the same time, like I know how the foreign tax credit, which form it goes to. So I kind of want to search for foreign tax credit. So you would just search for a name. I mean, the description foreign tax credit on form 1116 in our case. And here, um, yeah, I see right here, it says, it's, it's so cool. It's just so easy to navigate. It says uh, foreign tax carryovers. And here we are, we have all these foreign tax carryovers. As you can notice that it says 10 uh, tax years. So what it means, it's actually not gonna count in our 2020-12, right? Because it's already, um, uh, it's already expired. So we'll just start with whatever year. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of like not super excited that they just put 10, 9 or whatever, because I would rather see year, which year it was, but it's fine. It's really okay. So here it's pretty much, let's go to the from first to fourth, because it's easier to uh, determine. So what we actually have here for carryovers, we have 2022 and 2021, right? So 2022, that was the last year. Yes, because we're filing 2023 tax returns. So we'll put the amount right here. Um, that Let me see where it was, 485. And then before 2022, it was 2021. So this is where we put it. I actually hope they'll have a summary in actual years. So that wouldn't be that hard, right? Okay, cool. So now let's go to view and print and see if it shows up out under our form. And so here's our foreign tax credit form. We have some foreign taxes this year and it's just one. <laughs> and oh, it doesn't show up for some reason. I know why. It's actually because I didn't tell um, I didn't tell um, the program which income it is related to. So I have to go back foreign tax credit carryover and then I change all this kind of stuff. Oh, I did enter this. Okay, that's good. But here I didn't actually tell like what, if it's taxpayer or if it's things like that, passive income category, is that right? Passive, yeah, that should be right. And also let's see. In that's I don't need to enter that and here I probably need to enter other country it doesn't let me do other country or not I'm curious because majority of tax software does other country awesome this is good so now I think we entered this kind of stuff that should show up so it does show up right now uh, when we go to uh, form 116 foreign tax credit so it shows up right here as a summary of foreign tax credit remember oops i'm sorry this was our total and that shows up here and it also should show up under our carryover schedules so right here we have foreign tax credit carry over to the next year uh, so actually, like I found a mistake what I did wrong. So wh when I was entering the tax return, what I did, I, um, I accidentally checked this box. Data on this screen is AMT calculation. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. I'm sorry, guys. So that's why it was not actually going to form 116 like regular tax, but it was going to AMT. But if you need to enter AMT information, which is actually a really good lesson for us right now, all you have to do is to check this box and it's going to go to your foreign tax credit AMT calculation. Well. That's good. We're good with foreign tax credit. Let's move on. So section 179 is only deductible if, the, if we have um, taxable income. If we don't have taxable income and we have a loss, um, the section 179 will be carried forward to the next year. So when, that, when does it show up? Because not every tax software, not every tax return we receive will have carryovers list. So some of them we have to go to the forms and find it. So this is our depreciation form from last year. And here we have section that says carryover 
uh, disallowed deduction on your 2021. So this was carry over from 2021, carry forward to 2022. Now they were not able to deduct it this year, 2022 as well. So now this carry over uh, is disallowed deduction and now it's carry forward to 2023. So basically we need to enter in the tax software and it has show up on this line 10 of our form 4562. So let me show you how to enter it. So now we'll enter a uh, section 179 carryover from last year. So here on this form, uh, form 4562, we have the carryover to 2023. So I want this to show up under carryover from prior year on tax return 2023, right? Uh, so I, I would just, I know where I entered depreciation. So my first guess would be that it's very close to that place. So I go under depreciation details, and this is like where I enter assets. So that's not a place. Uh, then when I open this 4562 part one, I see there is this carryover of disallowed deduction from 2022. So it makes me think this is a place. So I just enter the amount. And now when we go to view and print, we should go to form 4562. And my idea is that it should show up under carryover uh, line 10, carryover of disallowed deduction from 2022, right? Uh, so with section 79, 179, it can be deducted if the um, business is at loss. So it will be carry over until they make income. So for example, this guy, it says here's, uh, it actually made like income this year. So this uh, deduction was allowed. If it, they didn't make income this year, this deduction will carry over to the following year. So now, well, the last one, but the not the mo it's also super important carryover, right? QBI carryover. Uh, so what happens like last year, let's say we have this QBI income, I mean loss pretty much, and we were not able to deduct it last year, right? Uh, so basically what happens is uh, we'll because we were not able we had some like okay uh, here in 2022 we have this qualified business carry forward from prior year it will loss of 8386 so we were not able to use it but we did offset this income in 2022 but we still have like 7357 left so that will be carry forward to next year so we can also offset qbi income next year as well uh, so how we see is that we have some carryovers. So we go to form 8995, which is qualified business income. And right here we see on line 16, total business loss carry forward. And we have this amount right here. Some softwares will have carryovers to 2023 section, but not all of them. So we have to be careful. Uh, so basically, uh, this thing will be carry forward to the next year. And this is what we need to enter in the tax software. So let's switch to the tax software right now. So same idea in Drake tax software for QBI deduction. Um, I would just see like where did I enter QBI in here? So I know it goes under adjustments and here this 8995 form, right? Let me show you the, what we're trying to enter. So here is this form from last year. So we had carry over here. It says total qualified business loss carry over to next year, 7,357. So that's where I entered. And so my goal is to go to that form, form 88995, 8995, and see if it's actually entered under line three, qualified business tax law. So I can see it here. I'm extremely happy. So this year it will be calculated towards calculating our QBI deduction. So we'll have income, we'll deduct this loss, and then this amount will be actually taken in consideration to calculate QBI deduction. Hope this video was helpful. Please comment below if there's any carryovers, any other carryovers you want me to show you where to enter. And also, as a side note, I also send, sell online courses on a different tax software, how to do individual and business tax preparation. So if you're interested, uh, visit my website, remotecpanla.com. And thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.